Okay, is it me or does this Michael Brown tragedy seem eerily similar to the Trayvon Martin scenario? Now before a bunch of people get their panties all bunched up in a wad and start blasting me, I want to make it clear I'm not taking a side on this issue because I don't know all the facts. None of us do. All we have to go on is video evidence and witness statements and what we witness happening with the crowds and police following the incident. I suggest everyone pay attention to what is happening now and wait for the facts of the evidence to come out before drawing any conclusions and taking sides. So let's take a look into the death of Michael Brown from an outside perspective from someone who does not live in that community. We have a surveillance video that was taken of supposed Michael Brown directly prior to the incident. I say supposed because I can't prove it happened right before. The man who is supposed to be Michael Brown looks absolutely huge in this video. And this man is obviously aggressive as he shoves this little store clerk back. The guy who is with the large man also looks like Michael Brown's friend who on the news states the cop shot him for no reason. But again, I have no proof of who that is or if these two gentlemen are them. I'm just going by what I can see here. So, this huge man shoves this little clerk back and goes back a second time like, I'll do what I want and you can't stop me. That's what I got from watching this. Very aggressive, very intimidating. Supposedly, the clerk reported a strong armed robbery. The large man stole some cigars and then soon after, we have video of Michael Brown laying in the street dead. Michael Brown was unarmed. I don't even know if the cigars were found on him. So in my frame of mind, my way of thinking, I ask myself, are stolen cigars worth taking a man's life? Of course not. That's ridiculous. Okay, if this was the same man and he was aggressive to the police officer, should an unarmed man be shot dead? Of course not. Where was the cop's taser? Why didn't he call for backup? There's a hundred questions we could ask why the police officer didn't do this or that. Cops are tasing little old ladies and kids with mental disorders all across the country, yet this cop chose to pull his gun and shoot. And just like the Trayvon Martin tragedy, people are outraged at the situation. No one knows what happened yet, but they're willing to go into the streets and protest against the abuse. Don't get me wrong, protest can be a very good thing, letting the world know of injustice so that those in power can do what's necessary to stop it from happening again. Sometimes protests have to happen to shine a light on the evil. Otherwise, it's just swept under the rug. But here's why it's important to watch what happens following an incident like this before deciding what side you'll stand with against evil. When the riots began, the police stood back and let the people rob the stores and destroy them. The police had the entire area completely surrounded and they just let it happen. Why? Then, when peaceful protesters took to the streets with their signs chanting, No Peace, No Justice, and Hands Up, Don't Shoot, there's hundreds of protesters, and two to three guys in the crowd start throwing bottles and Molotov cocktails at the police. The next thing you know, the whole crowd is being shot with rubber bullets and gassed. Now, I've seen this same scenario in multiple other countries. People try to protest and a few infiltrators provoke the police and it escalates into a full-blown civil war. This exact thing, this exact thing just happened in Ukraine. Do you remember that? Now what I do know, what I do know for a fact is Obama wants a civil war. He wants martial law declared not just in one city but nationwide so he can lock the country down and declare himself president for life. When martial law is declared in a country, not just a city, but in a country, the president can suspend all elections and remain president. Now I know this is a fact 
from the policies that he has, from the laws he's made, the laws he's broken, and his attempts at taking arms from the U.S. people. Look at what he's doing. The open borders. He flew Ebola patients into our country. My God! How many terrorists do you think have already made it across the border? The police are completely militarized now. They use SWAT teams for search warrants now. He is taking America down. And he's doing it on purpose. And after watching these other countries collapse, which Obama was right smack in the middle of, giving money and weapons to the terrorists, in just the last three years, they all started with peaceful protests. And I'm seeing it repeat right here in America, right now. You see, back in the day when the entire government and police departments weren't completely corrupt yet, and we didn't have a traitor president who wanted us destroyed, peaceful protests could make a positive difference. We can't say that anymore. The system is broken. Take this information and download it. It's one of them videos you're going to want to be able to look back upon. You are looking at proof, and the whole world's about to see this. It proves, without a doubt, that there is a orchestration taking place. And as you can see right here in front of you, these are not the protesters. These are members of the new Black Panthers that are being told by their militant leader to launch these Molotov cocktails at police. And you want to know what gets even crazier about it? Is their leader's been caught working with the head of the police, Ron Johnson. You guys remember him? Made that big emotional speech to the people. Said he would see them out there, this and that. And remember I told you only time would tell. A lot of people didn't know what to think of it. I said, actions speak louder than words. You're, you're looking at it. Checks and balances are gone. The police won't stop the infiltrators now. They let them remain in the crowd so they can continue to give the police reason to attack the rest of the crowd. To squash our First Amendment right to speak up against the evil. Take away our freedom. Lock down our country. Take away our weapons so we can't defend ourselves. And after that happens, and we're sitting ducks, the terrorists who already came across our open borders will strike. Checkmate. New World Order Takeover. These are my thoughts on this situation as of this moment. I think the peaceful protesters believe they're doing the right thing, and in a stable country it would probably work. But I don't think the people realize the military games they're being sucked into and what will result if it continues. Never let a good crisis go to waste. How many times have we all heard that? We are witnessing the birth pains of the end times according to Revelation in the Bible. Everything's been set into place. If you're not a Christian and you don't believe in all this stuff, you might want to go back through my videos and uh, catch up. God tells us, my people perish from lack of knowledge. You don't have to be one of those who perish.